to convert the project to UE5.4 um, with a lot of face smashing and frustration, but I did end up figuring what exactly what I needed to do to get it working. Um, I have it working now. However, uh, whereas before, if I ran temporal AA, it would cause my clouds to be rendered, my clouds and atmosphere to be rendered in the wrong location, like relative to the camera. Now, if I run it in multi-sample AA, it causes that problem. And if I run it in temporal AA, it, it jitters. Um, so that's obviously not ideal. Um, but I have an idea, something that I was thinking about about halfway through here you can see the you can see the problem i'm talking about right here our atmosphere and clouds are rendered like relative to the camera space um and then if i go to project settings and i switch it back to temporal I switch it from this to temporal it renders in the right place but i don't know if you can tell that it's like high speed jittering but it's high speed jittering and I don't know why let's get a little closer to it all right can you see it vibrating I don't know if you can see that or not over the stream capture but it's vibrating um, that is not ideal and so my thought process is I had an idea a while back um, and that was that we would ray march instead of using a post process effect, we would ray march inside of a sphere, right? So, like an actual mesh, and do our cal calculations with the mesh as the outer bounds, right? And the inner bounds as a sphere intersect. Uh, so, we need a proof of concept of that. So let's go ahead. I created this material, but I haven't done anything with it yet. Let's try to get a very basic um, proof of concept for that going. So we're going to need float world position. That's going to be the position of the surface. Um, float camera position. That should give us all the vector information we need. Um, flow inner, inner radius, and then uh, texture 3D, uh, volume text, uh, sampler state, fall text sampler, um, Float three simple density trace. Uh, these are float threes. So to start, we'll just do float three radar equals world position minus camera position. Analyze uh, or I know we need a sphere trace here to calculate the distance, but I'm just trying to get like very basic proof of concept working for int i int. Uh, uh, let's do int density steps. I is less than density steps. I plus plus. Um, 
float step distance equals 10. Um, float three sample pause equals world position plus ray der times float i times step distance Float sample density three D sampler full fall text fall text sampler float three position. We're just going to return simple 3D texture sample. Um, total density zero. Total density equals step distance times sample density. Sample position, turn float three, the total density, total density. Okay, great. And then in the struct functions f, f dot dot world position equals world position f dot camera position equals camera position f dot inner radius equals 100 f dot density steps let's do I don't know 32 for now um, F dot fall text equals fall text and F dot vol text sampler equals vol text sampler. That should be a very simple density trace. Uh, and then finally return F dot simple density trace. So we're going to try to get this running. Custom node. Oh my god. They added a, oh that's so nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's so much better. Okay, so, like, now I can see on this thing, I don't have to, like, oh, that's so nice. I'm already liking upgrading, except for the fact that it broke all my shaders. Um, input, so, first input. World position. Second input. Camera position. Position. Third input. Volume texture. Right. Texture objects. Perlin. Whirly balanced. So, like, I lost what you mean. 
These are the same. All right, whatever. Camera position, world position. My bad. Boop. 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 Too bright. Let's get rid of the step distance for the moment. Ah, aha. Our, um, it's working, I think. Divide this by like a big number, uh, 150. Actually, divide this by the object radius times some number. Um, B noise scale. One, two. Okay. Still wrong a bit. Probably my camera vector is calculated in the wrong order. This is so awesome. It's so much, I mean, it's still not great, but it's so much better than it was. Okay, <laughs> I don't think that's right. It's I like, but you can at least see the code. Uh, camera position. No, that's not right. Oh, you know what? Uh, this is where we need our race sphere intersect. Because we're, yeah. Um, we can actually. It's, it's like I'm so used to copy pasting it that I forget that I can just fucking. Yeah, that was it. So our step position is not calculated right because um we need to be doing like our sphere trace but that's definitely what it was so like right now we're just arbitrarily marching through this volume
So there's going to be a whole effort here, unfortunately. Also, ignore the fucking shitty ocean. I was just trying to get some Gerstner waves. But it's a work in progress. I'm going to try something. One. Arm test. Do I not save this? Save it. Um, scene color. The right spot of bubble tapping that looks like a damn ocean. There's like, oh, oh. Okay, now we can uh, vector parameter. All right, something like this. Oh, that's the fucking problem. If I move it to post process domain. Process. Scene texture. Post process zero. Component mask RGB. Yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, let's go back. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go back to two sided. Radius. Strange. What do you do? When you observe on the 
Yeah, so now I'm remembering why I made it a post process in the first place. Well, uh, maybe they've improved the sky atmosphere component. Let's try that. Oh, damn it. Center. It's not too bad. I don't know why it does this crap. Let's turn off this water sphere. Like, why are we switching here? Yeah, see, like, all this choppiness here, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but... It's so close. Frustratingly so. Does this look worse than mine? Okay, layer height.
Like, it looks okay from down here, I guess, but... Oh. Hey, look at that. It's just not good. It's not a reliable... All right, I don't think this is going to be viable. It's also slow. Hang on, um, we might be able to increase the speed here. Let's take the detail on our planet down a lot. I don't feel so bad about the problems I was having with my cloud layer when I see this. I mean, like, here's where it, like, really looks good. When you're in the cloud layer, it looks good. When you're on the surface, It looks pretty good on the surface and also not in a cloud. It looks good, but like as soon as you get even a little bit away, it starts looking real bad. Okay, so let's delete this. This post process says, I can't talk. This post process effect is not jittering. Actually, is it hard to tell? This is our version. Which I would say looks worse from the ground, but looks better from everywhere else. And it looks okay from the ground. But this jittering Is it jittering? Yes, so So the reason I wanted to convert to this is because apparently they've exposed all the gravity controls so that you can get default um you can get like the default third person character and shit like that to have directional gravity wherever you want it. Um, which is huge because I was going to have to build all that.
Hang on, let me remove the animation from the cloud layer. Does it vibrate if I don't animate it? Yes. So, like, I don't know why, formerly, if I did this, it would be centered properly and also not vibrate. Like, you can see it's not vibrating now. Um, post process effect changes location when using diff permanent anti aliasing methods. You need help. But if all inserted in the end of the post-processing graph, that means you get the final color grading after the temporal anti aliasing was applied. This is the best spot for many simple post-processing performance and easy use. However, you can see the former region has no way silhouette, but the motion you would see the silhouette jittering around one pixel. This is this moves the rendering of the whole screen by subpixel each frame, multiplying frames together. We can, however, move the very earlier shot. Oh, ho, 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 okay. Temporal anti aliasing. And then we just have to go into our material and change our. Um, Also, I need to look at a okay, run temporal. And it removes the jitter but it's also like way too bright. So how about after do that? It's all fucked up when I do that. Translucency, save it. 
No. Bizarre. No. Both place in the tournament. But by this point, we're jittering. Can I say decrease the light intensity? This may be a solution. What does it look like in the atmosphere? Oh, it's not too bad, actually. The cloud's not rendering right. On the back side of the planet. Not too bad. So we'd have to figure out our lighting issues on the back side of the planet here. Interesting. Oh, what's up, dude? I wasn't looking at chat. Yeah, so I converted this over to UE54, um, and I'm trying to solve the fallout from that. 
so that I can use the directional gravity stuff they put in and get like the third person character running around on the surface of the planet and things like that. Unfortunately, I probably need to update some of these plugins. Okay, I didn't save my changes to the material. Atmosphere, uh, global, shared light intensity, 0.5. Point one, point two. Uh, let's turn clouds off and get our atmosphere tuned properly. Um, all right, there we go. Ah. Blendable location for depth of field. I get one. What happens if I do that? Nothing. What about one? Nothing. What about a thousand? Nothing. What about if I uncheck this? Okay. Color after depth of field seems to be about the same. Translucence, uh, yeah, okay. Translucency after depth of field uh, overwrites my sun, but that's probably just because its order is wrong. Try changing the priority and see if that changes it. Nope, it does not. Hmm. Uh, so I just want to turn this off because it looks bad because that is that feature's not done yet I'd love to get back to working on the water but I gotta fix the shit that broke oh god damn it all right what's our air here Uh, so we got a null pointer here in the real-time mesh code. I fixed this, um, but I updated my real-time mesh code, the newest version, and I guess the fix didn't fix what it got overwritten. Let's um, hang on, hang on. We did it like this, um, auto LED equals this if LED, why are you not auto completing my curly braces, Visual Studio? All right, so I had a null check here. Save it, stop it, go. And I'm just going to turn ray tracing off, probably.
but I am excited to experiment around with the uh, the gravity changes that they made. Be cool to be able to like get out of the ship and walk around on the planet instead of just flying around it. Also, it'd be really nice if I could just make my gravity influence zones affect the like existing physics functionality instead of having to calculate their own forces and shit. Like instead of instead of having the influence zone like exerting a force on the objects, it would just be setting the object's directional gravity like center point and the amount of gravity for that object when it's inside of that, you know? God damn it. Save all. All right, so edit, project settings, ray tracing. I guess it is needed. Doesn't look too bad. Right, let's see if we can trigger that ray tracing bug. Didn't do it that time. It would happen when you were like moving quickly close to the surface, generating lots of mesh pieces and immediately destroying them. Seems to be working now. Ambient is too high in our material. It's a little better. 
Atmosphere is still too fucking bright. It's a little bit more like it. So, yay. Oh, shit. Doesn't really help me very much. All right, so obviously there's some problems, some fallout with the conversion. It's not 100% perfect. Move around the mouse, take the mouse forward if the player control over using move, but the mouse coordinates is always relevant to the world success for blah blah blah. When the player is upside down, those mouse inputs need to take that into account. So that are a bit of code that receives this input. Wait, this is all 
think. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be coming up soon. This will be soon. That'll be fun. We'll be able to, like, fly around in our ship and get out. Speaking of which, I don't think I've tried to... All right, ship works. Damn it, what the fuck? Interesting. Well, we got the atmosphere to stop jittering at least. I gotta figure out what the cause of this error is. I also got to figure out a way to get some more like micro variation in the landscape. Right now, it's all kind of macro. Hmm. <laughs> 
They added this, which is like really nice. Doing anything? What the fuck? Ah. Ah. -ha. Hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of at a loss as to why the ray marching would be different in 5-4 than 5-3, but there you go. Um, it's just math. It should be the same. I love the fact that they added this custom note editor, though. That's super nice. 
Now if they could just like actually support HLSL instead of having to bastardize it, it'd be great. So at some point in the next day or two, I'm going to run through this gravity tutorial. I don't know if I want to start on it right now, though. I don't have very much time. I was just hoping to fix this atmosphere jittering, which to be fair, I did. But now we have cloud lighting issues. Like These clouds should be way darker than they are on the backside of the planet. It's going to be fun to take this cloud technology and make some like nebula technology with it. Like the same, same way we build these clouds, we should be able to build nebulas. In fact, it should be easier. We don't have to do shell traces, just sphere traces for that. And some mountain ranges. I want to investigate the effects of changing the compositing order of this thing. Yeah, see, like, it's not exactly right. Retrace shadows, that's for sure. Doesn't appear to make a difference. Also doesn't appear to make much of a difference. We also get nanite displacement with this, which is something we could potentially mess around with. Looks like they've just fully enabled it.
una evaluación de la obra. <laughs> uh, okay, that's not it. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, window edit, project settings. Anti aliasing. Just look on the mountains. Uh, about the same. But this is when it jitters. It should. You can see jittering. So that's not going to work. Has to be one of these other. Well, we just seen color before depth of field, I guess. Oop, it happened again. All right, that's all the time I got for now. I gotta go do some shit. <sighs> gotta get my workout done and uh, run a couple errands. Uh, later this weekend, I'm gonna try to do sphere of gravity. So, later. <laughs>